This exhibition is called Life of a Dead Tree, and it's a project in which we brought an enormous dead ash tree into the galleries here at MoCA. Throughout the exhibition, the tree will be examined to find out what organisms live inside the tree, and we're especially interested in an organism called the emerald ash borer, which is probably the organism that has killed this tree. We're in a, a bit of an environmental crisis around a, a number of um, introduced invasive um, insects that have come here accidentally from different parts of the world and they're introduced into these, this novel environment and they are essentially destroying our forests and one of those is the emerald ash borer which is eating all of the ash trees and there are a lot of ash trees or there were a lot of ash trees in the city of Toronto and I'm sure that people here are curious why all these ash trees are dying and disappearing and so um, largely that's because of this emerald ash borer Ashes can be enormous, right? They can live for a very long time. So we wanted to search for a tree that um, you know, had that grandeur of scale like an adult ash tree would have. So this, this is a tree that's probably around 150 to 200 years old. Um, you know, we, it took us a long time to locate a tree that we could safely um, move. And, uh, and fell without entirely destroying its integrity. Uh, normally when the city will take a tree like this, they'll probably chip it or do something like that. So we really wanted to keep this tree intact and uh, in some way to give a sense of, you know, the, the, the magnificence that we're losing when these trees die. I want viewers to keep two things in mind, right? One, of course, is the tragedy of, of the death of these magnificent trees through this invasive pest. The other thing is that, you know, a dead tree is still biologically productive. You know, a dead tree, uh, you know, is this kind of high rise for an enormous number of other organisms. So um, invertebrates, uh, uh, fungi and lichen and mosses and all sorts of things are living on this tree uh, and uh, so when they go in the wood chipper we're kind of losing that uh, ecological productivity. So I want the viewer to keep these two maybe even contradictory things in mind. Uh, luckily we've been able to um, a partner with the university's department of forestry and with the ROM on this project so we're able to access the tree with a uh, um, expertise right so people who are knowledgeable about um, um, entomology who are experts in the problem of invasive species and who are also experts in imaging um, insects. So a lot of the invertebrates uh, that we're collecting we're sending to the ROM and there's an absolutely wonderful uh, microscope technician who's taking fantastic photographs of them. I think the first thing that happens when people come into the room is it's it's a little shocking because of the scale of the tree, right? And, and the theatricality by which we presented the tree, but also more of their senses are activated by just what they see, right? You are greeted with this uh, kind of smell of the tree. There are different opportunities in which you can touch the tree, where, where the tree, um, you know, transgresses the barrier line and you can actually uh, feel it and you can interact with people who are working on the tree. So, um, you know, I, I want to activate more than just the sense of, of sight with a project like this. Uh, you know, the project is, is a very melancholy one. You know, I, th I think about this project very much as, um, you know, a, a project of mourning. A project of mourning not only for this tree, but for the, you know, the fate of the North American forest, which is in such peril right now. And we really don't know how this is going to play out because ashes are not the only tree that are endangered right now. Hemlocks are also endangered and a whole series of other things. Uh, and so we have to begin to get smart about how we relate to bringing things across borders um, in relationship to carrying these pests, which you know, no one in intentionally introduces these things, but they are uh, an unforeseen and a devastating consequence of global trade. I'm, I'm interested in the, the aspect of this exhibition which, which has um, you know, where, where audience members can have more direct relationship to people who are working here and, and to a kind of conversation. You know, this, this work has 
I think, very strong um, educational and discursive possibilities, right? It's, it's really a piece um, that it's hard to wrap your head around what precisely this means. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's obviously not a science exhibition. Uh, it's not an art exhibition uh, conventionally. It's something like a hybrid. And I think that audience members, viewers, kind of disentangling those things, that, that's really, for me, the aspect I'm most interested in.